Let me take you back a couple of decades to when we were thinking about, because I was part of the pioneering team to do this. Now there are dozens of drugs that can actually do this. But back then, when we were hunting for things, we were looking in natural sources. What does Mother Nature have that can actually help our body cut off the blood supply to cancers like breast cancers? Well, the first one, by the way, was soybeans. Amazingly. I was just going to say, if you soy. It was soybeans. And I'll tell you the yeah. story. Here's a story that most people don't know. I, I love to share these little nuggets that people just don't know about. It turns out that there was a young researcher at the time, Ted Fotsis, who had moved from Greece to Switzerland to do research. And when you're a young researcher in a lab, they kind of give you the junior guy, the least interesting stuff to do. And they give you kind of the leftovers. So he got in there and it was a hormone lab, by the way. It was a oh, lab nice. about hormones. And this hormone lab in Switzerland pioneered the ability to look for estrogen in urine, in women's urine. So we're going back to the really late 1970s, early 1980s. All right. And it turns out they gave this young researcher, Ted, Ted Fosis, they gave him a, a crate of old urine samples from women that they didn't want to use anymore. And they're like, here, this is your project. Go figure out something interesting to do with it. So he looked in the urine and he found the estrogen, right? Because these are women. Mm -hmm. And what he found though, when he was analyzing the urine, there was this weird spike that came out of the urine that he'd never seen before. In fact, nobody had actually okay. seen it before. So in the lab, he cut the spike out. This is how you do it. You cut the spike out and you analyze what is the spike. That spike was a natural compound from soy called genistein. And so his lab basically said, so what? You know, because it didn't come right. from humans. Don't forget, this lab was studying human estrogen. And so right. he found this weird estrogen-like spike out of women. They cut it out. And they said, well, it didn't come from humans. It didn't come from the women. Where did it come from? It came from soy. So, and they're like, well, tell us that it's useful or don't tell us at all. All right. And so what he did is he actually studied the genistein, which is a phytoestrogen, a plant estrogen, which came from soy. All right. And this is one of the origins to how the whole urban legend about soy being damaging came from, phytoestrogens. And he tested it in the systems used for drug development, ultimately, to, to see if you can starve cancer. And it, when he drops the soy genistein in there, boom. It knocked out all the blood vessels that, like, for example, wow. a breast cancer in the lab would actually recruit. And he was like, Eureka, wow, that's amazing. All right. And it came from soy. And that led to a, pub a research publication that changed everything, including for me, because it led us to understand that foods have natural substances that can cut off the blood supply to cancer. And that's led to my TED Talk and lots of other things that are going on right now. But the origin, the first food that was discovered was soy. Now, let oh, that you, was where it all came from. That's where it all came from. Yeah. Now, wow. From okay. a, from a, from a, from a hormone lab. See, in from a woman. From, it came from a woman. And it came from really? a woman. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, let me just tell you how this urban legend came about that yeah, soy please. is actually harmful for breast cancer. So, and, and you know, it's like so many other things that are out there in the uh, blogosphere, in the social media space, and the rumor mill. I think most urban legends on health come from well-intentioned people who Probably, are trying to yeah. put one and one together. And somebody heard that some that human breast cancer, some human breast cancers are uh, estrogen sensitive, and they are. And then that same person also read somewhere that soy beans have something called a phytoestrogen and didn't think about the phyto part, just thought about the estrogen part. And again, well intentioned saying, well, in that case, you don't want to put any estrogen from soy into the woman. And that's where this took off, like this whole idea that yeah. women shouldn't eat soy. But unfortunately, they were wrong because they weren't scientists and they, they didn't know the data. So this is where, by the way, mm -hmm. I think for anybody listening, having partial knowledge really requires you to keep looking for more information and not just yeah. take the halfway mark and say, I'm done. I'm the expert. Yes. Because what happened is that if you actually, as a scientist, look at what a phytoestrogen looks like, let's say this is the chemical structure and look what the human estrogen looks like, they don't look anything alike. If you had one on the left screen and the right screen, they're completely yeah. different. The chemistry looks yeah. completely different. And in fact, yeah. what was since discovered is that the phytoestrogen from soy 
blocks the human estrogen. It's Mother Nature's tamoxifen. All right. Yes. It actually amazing. blocks the growth of breast cancers. Estrogen yes. sponsored breast cancer. So just completely the opposite, and it starves the cancer. So people would say to me when I was talking about this earlier in my career, they'd say, you know, that's a nice theory, Dr. Lee, but look, I'm a woman. I'm not going to take the chance. All right. Right. Well, so what I say is let's look at where the rubber beats the road in people. Let's look at real women with real clinical trials that had only women in it, right? Women with breast cancer. And one of the most famous ones that I talk about is uh, it's the Shanghai Women's Breast Cancer Study where they studied 5,000 women who were at the highest risk for breast cancer. And you know why they were at the highest risk? Because they already had breast cancer, right? Ah. They're, they're at super high risk. And here's what right. they found. They found that the women who ate more soy had lower mortality. Okay, about because it's protective. Because it's protective, about thirty percent lower. And those women who already had their breast cancer removed by surgery and well treated by chemo radiation uh, or hormonal therapy that didn't have any cancer left, those women who ate the most soy over a period of years had a thirty percent reduction in the chance of breast cancer would come back. All right, crazy. So survival. Now, then the critic goes, and it's fine. I think anybody wanting to have an intelligent conversation, you've got to be open-minded, ask questions. I always tell people to ask questions. They're like, okay, well, that's one study, even though there's 5,000 people in it, you know, has it been repeated? And what I say is that actually it's a great question because there are 14 other studies that have come out since. And in nice. 14 clinical trials involving women only with breast cancer, in every single study, looking at soy intake and breast cancer outcomes, eating soy led to less mortality. And in every study, eating soy led to greater survival. All right. Amazing. So this is the rubber meets the road. This is the clinical yeah. part of it. And that's an, it's a great example. And, and you know, I know you wanted to talk about hormones, which is I, why I wanted to bring up some of the biggest advancements in this field, in the field I work in, and in angiogenesis came from this hormone lab when it comes to food as medicine. That's crazy. You know, so I'm about to put out another book. It's called Eat Like a Girl, and it's a, a companion book to Fast Like a Girl. And so my publisher asked me, you know, would you do like how to break a fast and how women should eat? And I told them only under one condition, if I can bring the conversation on soy back. We have to talk about soy because I have no, and I never, I didn't know the backstory. So you just really helped me understand the backstory. Cause I was like, why are we walking around like putting other chemicals, really toxic chemicals on our skin and in our body. And yet we're like, nope, no soy. I'm like, so soy has a phytoestrogen component to it. And in my uh, clinic, we used to run hormone tests, urinary hormone tests, like thousands of them. And what I saw is women that had the highest diet soy also had the highest amount of 2-OH estrogen metabolite, which is the protective estrogen. So you just cleared up something for me because I've been walking around like, why are we villainizing so soy? There's so many other things to villainize, but there's something really helpful in soy that we need to bring back. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to contribute more back matter to help you tell the story as you write it. But I'll tell you, I think that for anybody watching this and listening to this, there is something important that we need to say. We're not talking about generic soy, like soy fillers right. or soy burgers or ultra processed yeah. soy, because actually Thank if you, you take a look at the fake meat, that's out there, the different burgers and hot dogs and weird things that they're making, those are super ultra processed. So soy, unfortunately, has become also an ingredient that is used in ultra processed state into foods that, you know, are not, it's not even arguably anymore. It's very clearly that the eating yeah. ultra processed foods is bad for hormones, bad for cancer yes. risk, bad for metabolism, bad for dementia. cardiovascular dementia. You know, so let's be clear when we're talking about the benefits of soy, we're talking about whole sourced soy foods. So edamame, tofu, edamame. soy milk, not ultra processed. And by the way, people go, well, you know, I don't know how many soy products I can actually eat. There's like three of them in my grocery store. What I tell people to do, if you actually have an Asian market near by you, mm. just search out on your Google Maps, you type in Asian market and see where they are. Take a drive out to them one day, just like a field trip, okay? Just explore and go ask somebody where the foods with soybeans are or soy 
And they're going, to, they're going to take you in. There are hundreds of soy foods that are around in Asia, right? Amazing. Uh, and yeah. By, and, and by the way, there's one last thing I need to tell you about the urine that was studied by Ted Fotis, the samples. They right. came from a previous study on female hormones from women who were farmers in a village outside of Kyoto. And they were almost all vegetarians. Oh, and of the vegetables they were eating was mostly soy-based foods. Interesting. All right? That's incredible. Yeah.